you guys wanted more renovation projects. So here is an office building from the 1880s uh, in Alabama. Let's go find out what we can dig up. Welcome to a weird little mechanical space. This is kind of, it's very tight, but it's also very cavernous. Up there is a giant furnace that is, I mean, we've got 12 foot ceilings in here. It goes up another six feet. I could fit my entire body standing up there on top of the ceiling. I mean, you could if you could get to it, but you can't get to it because there's too many things away. This is a new addition. So this is a dehumidifier. This is the biggest one that April Air sells. It's 130 pint a day. And um, I want to show you how they raise this up. So, um, so when you say, I want to have a dehumidifier in a small closet that's got a, a crack to outside that you can clearly see daylight through, we're kind of worried about this closet because they had issues with condensation on the duct work, as you can see right there. And so the idea was to dry this space and, and also the rest of this floor. And so you would need to then take from this room or give to this room. It needs to be part of the equation, and it's not right now. This right here is the filter slot. Everything that happens before the filter is coming in. The filter is the first thing that happens in a piece of HVAC equipment to protect the equipment. So the drying is happening here. This is the air coming in. It's coming from this return, which is made out of plywood. And that's not like the best thing to make stuff out of because like it had it's food for mold and if it gets wet and all that stuff. Okay, so we're drawing from here and then we're giving to the return again right here which then goes down and meets up with that. This is a circle, and if it's, whether this is actually on or not, that air that just got dried might come down and make it back into this machine because it's being delivered, the dry air is being delivered before the wet air is being drawn, like upstream. So number one, this air handler has to run all the time, and we've got renters in this uh, office building and they like to, since they pay the bills, they turn the air conditioning off over the weekend, potentially. So then the whole system is defeated and not only is it not cooling over the weekend, it's also not drying and then we have more durability issues. So what I'm about to do is take this thing completely off of here so that we're drawing air from this room and then giving air into the return. Giving air to the return is not a great idea. If we could have given it to the supply up there, that would have been better, but frankly, feasibility is always some like old building. You gotta do what you gotta do. So this is like a thing to do. There's two systems here. So probably this little 350 CFM is not hurting this giant set of two, you know, twin three ton air conditioners that are each going 1200. So it's kind of a drop in the bucket, but it is taking out a little bit of the drawing ability away from the air conditioners to dump it in the return. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this. Oh, and by the way, there's a furnace in this room, as I already mentioned. We might be worried about depressurizing this room, but we've got all kinds of leakages into the building and to outside from this room. And this room is so big, actually, like it looks like it's small, but it's actually huge, that there's no way we could depressurize this room. That being said, I am about to test it when we actually do uh, disassemble this. Oh, don't even have to do that because it's, you can just pull it right off. Okay, oh. weird. So now this is still a return. We still have air, it's pulling down in there. So I need to take this off. Uh, we're gonna do a more permanent job in a minute. And the filters are in the grills in this uh, setup. So this would be a dust issue and it would collect dust in not just the blower wheel, but also in the coil which will grow mold a lot. So now we will test, we will test the pressure in this room to make sure that we have not created a dangerous situation for the furnace, which is an atmospheric draft furnace. It means it draws it from the room. So if we depressurize too much, we might actually use the chimney, the flue of that furnace as an intake device for the rest of the building. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you tell that you do not need to cut a hole in the wall of your mechanical closet. That is something that's dumb that people do every day. There are people doing that 
right now in mechanical closets that do not need a hole in the wall to outside. Okay, this attic is spray foamed. This is a huge attic and they, the installer gave us several like indications that they knew what they were doing. Um, the spray foam installation itself looks solid. They, they covered the roof rafters so you can't see any wood that means that you've got continuous levels of insulation even if it's only a little bit covering the wood that's good um, we have this hvac system up here and uh, it doesn't work the blower still works but what we want to know when we're scanning with infrared is uh does, is the insulation actually doing a good job and it seems like it's doing a pretty good job it is pretty hot up here it's like 83 degrees and i just want to point out this right here which is the coolest place in this entire attic, which is a totally unsealed gable wall fan and vent. There's another one right here next to you. Then those get completely left open, which is like, it's hard to interview for every single little thing, but that's why you have to visit sites that these installs are happening at, because air leakage into this space even if it's nice and cool air, which it is right now, like it's actually cooling off this space, um, which is gross. But uh, this is a major problem because this whole point of spray foam is that it's supposed to be an insulation that also air seals. But if we didn't take care of the gigantic, you know, 14 inch holes in the wall, then that's none of this is air sealed. So this, this part right here is the original lath and plaster yeah. ceiling. And down there is the new drop ceiling, which now the insulation that was up here has fallen down and is sitting on the back side of that new ceiling. Gross. There's the main flue from the rest of the building. There's the one from the lower floor as well. And this is the one that's coming from the furnace that's attached to this. All right, the people who installed this are Mitsubishi Diamond Dealers, okay? And this is even dumber than the one that's down in the main space. Here's the filter, so this is the in. The in is coming from the return right there. So it's coming out there, going around here, going in. Dry air is coming out of the ass of this thing, and literally, that is a circle. That is a classic, I mean, it's an oval, but, uh, that's like elementary school stuff. That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. All right, so did they, did they make this circle because they thought this attic is an outdoor space because almost like technically it is with the vents, um, although they're louvered and the fans are not on, did they think the attic is outside so we don't want to connect to the attic? Right. And this is where it's just like, they get confused. And if there's not somebody overseeing the whole thing and saying, look, here's what it is. This room is supposed to be inside, so that needs to be plugged up. This crap on the floor needs to be gone. This thing needs to be drawing from the attic, which I'm about to do right now. Uh, detach this and plug that up as well, just like we did downstairs. And then this will actually get dried. And also, this thing will know what temperature, what humidity it actually is in here. So when a spray foam contractor says that they're gonna clean up the floor of the attic. This is not what they should mean. This is terrible. They did not vacuum up any of the solid stuff. They might have vacuumed up the insulation, but that's totally disgusting. Well, they didn't look here. I'll, I mean, I know it's down there, but I'm just saying like this space now is supposed to be inside the building. And would you want to breathe Old that? Old roofing pieces. There's loads of insulation down there. Could the, I mean, the openings are plenty large to put a vacuum. Yeah, they were lazy. This is lazy contractors. And like, no offense, contractors do a good job though. Like you don't get a pass just because you're a contractor. All right. 130 year old building that's never paid attention to air sealing. Let's see.
person that's even leakier than the old 120 year old house that we did the other day. Air building, all doors are open. All exterior doors and windows are closed. We're zoning the attic. The attic is spray foam. We want it to be inside, even with those big holes. At eight pascals to outside, we've got less than two pascals uh, connected to outside in the attic. That means the attic is less than 25% connected to outside. That means it's more than 75% connected to inside. That's awesome already. This is how you do it. You come into the attic. You own the attic. This is your attic. Take out that fan. Make this flat. Cover this thing up, the panel. That's what it looks like. Grace is, uh, it's nice working together in a hot attic uh, in a different state. She's pointing out how lonely this is because we were like, oh, even if we told people who own this building what we did today, they won't get it. And they'd be like, why'd you do that? Even if we told the tenants of this building what we did today, they wouldn't get it. If we told the spray foam guys and the HVAC guys what we did in here today, they might not get it either. And we still did it because it's important and we're trying to make the world a better place and this is how you do that. So like, keep the faith, everybody. Okay, now, what we just did, and if you ever forget the math, that's why I wrote this book and why I carry this book. I wrote this book for me so I could have all of this stuff in one place. If you're looking at, there's a couple different, um, whole area sizes. There's effective leakage area, which is a US metric. Um, and then there's a Canadian equivalent leakage area. Equivalent leakage area is divided by 10. Effective leakage area is divided by almost 20. It's multiplied by 0 0.055. So it looks like for what we just sealed up, which was two 17 inch diameter holes in the attic, each of those is 227 square inches. So that's a total of 454 square inches that we just sealed up. It is, according to the math, and I have a really hard time believing this, we're gonna drop this number from 23,000, 225 or whatever we were at, down by between 4,500 and 8,500, depending on the American or the Canadian version of this. We'll see, CFM 50 that is. Because it's having to estimate so hard, it's going so far from eight and a half all the way up to 50. It's, um, it's having to do a fair amount of estimation, but the fact that we're even in the thousands for the reduction that we just did up there is pretty impressive. Always have two manometers. Always have two manometers. Always have two manometers. Uh, that doesn't make me super happy. For what we just did, that's almost exactly the same reading that we had to begin with. How is that possible? That's the topic for another video. Well, if any of you blower door nerds out there have an idea of something that I... Did, did the disconnecting the um, circular... No. Contraption? The dehumidifier? No. There's still a fair amount of leakage up there, is what this is saying, aside from that giant hole, the two giant holes that we had. That's about the same percentage that we had before. Does that also potentially mean that the spray foam did not go all the way down to where it would have yeah, really Yeah, there's air probably it? little, there's probably, yeah, you're right, because the ceiling, you can see here the ceiling height is about 10, and here the ceiling height is about 8. So we've got something like two feet of what probably is what you could consider like a band's joist running along the edge. And they, it looks like they didn't break through this, the plaster ceiling everywhere to get at that. So I'm thinking like that might be a thing. But anyway, I'm glad at least we brought down the CF and fit. So that is all the testing that I want to bother with today. Um, at this point, what needs to happen, just like with any project of any type in your entire life, you get a bunch of information and you use that to make a decision. Will we see 
uh, improvement made on this building? And will we be back to test that? I don't know, but I frankly doubt it. I doubt that this will end up being a, a high performance retrofit kind of situation. And that's okay. Knowing helps you get more information and that is a fine way to use testing. So if the people who you test for, or if you yourself get testing and you decide to do nothing with it and just live with what you know, that is okay, that is acceptable. So just know that that's like, this is all part of just being a smarter building owner. And um, it would be nice if the, some of the things in here got fixed up. We fixed some things today. That's always nice to be able to do. I hope that you guys comment below if you have any other stories or any other things that you're interested in, particularly about renovations. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.